Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining together uh, this morning in prayer to hear God's word in order to strengthen our spirits and keep holy the Lord's day. There might be those who are new to the parish or from outside the parish joining us. Know that you are welcome and embraced by our community and you are, as you honor us by your presence. Thanks to the Lane family for being our public voice uh, to the prayer responses. All of you in your domestic church do uh, join in. Uh, the month of November uh, is always dedicated throughout the entire month to all saints and all souls. It's an opportunity, as the scriptures will indicate, for us to consider our divine destiny, the fact that we live on the horizon of eternity and that there is a homecoming that awaits us in God's kingdom, that death is not the end, but the beginning of a newer life. And we remember in particular those in our community who walked with us in faith and who now uh, dwell in God's kingdom and who died since last All Souls Day. And we'll begin with a prayerful meditation and a visual meditation of those, uh, a beautiful hymn, The Saints Among Us and Our Loved Ones Who Died. Oh, uh -huh. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The foggy and dark gray skies outside today perhaps is a fitting background for our scripture readings. They can hardly seem like good news because they tell of disaster and distress, the uh, permanent end of what we know and love. But these accounts of the end time also point to the beginning of something new, a time when all that is good, wholesome, lovely, and true will be preserved. So let us open our hearts to the message of renewal that God's word brings to each of us. Lord Jesus, you are the wisdom shining brightly in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are justice for all ages. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you now and always show us the path of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Your creation, O God, runs its appointed course, as from the ends of the earth you gather a people you call your own. Confirm us in the strength of your abiding word. Steady our hearts in the time of trial, so that on the day of the Son of Man we may without fear rejoice to see his coming. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite Ed Halschwander to deliver our first scripture reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people, it shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, you are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the, delight, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I ask Mary Turgeson to deliver our second scripture. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies 
are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, 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 luya. Halle, luya, halle, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the good news according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. How many of you have ever attended a Cirque du Soleil? The uh, famous production of the Montreal based Cirque du Soleil have dazzled and entertained me on a number of occasions. Under the eye-catching blue and yellow stripes of their circus tent, which comes to town every couple of years near AT&T Park, the cyclists and gymnasts, actors and comedians take your breath away with their gravity-defying stunts. Among my favorites are the trapeze artists. Looking up at them in their dizzying heights, the Olympic-like athletes swing gracefully like the hawks over our Lafayette Hills. Holding on to a bar, each artist gains momentum until the moment is right to let go of the bar and catch the outstretched hand of a partner. The moment of release is accompanied by audible gasps of an unbelieving audience, mine usually the loudest, incredulous at what we're seeing. A poet captures the experience in these words. There is a bond unclaimed by many, a bond between each touch of a tightly curled fist or the wrist of an artist in motion, seeing an ocean of darkness and light bridging the gaps of relentless flight, timing measureless grasps of a partner's hands as you release to see piercing eyes looking up in the stands. How could this be that my trust is deeply bestowed in the hands of another whose thoughts are untold? Come to my rescue, my angel in flight, as we give the audience the greatest performance of the night. Every day, you and I put on a show no less dazzling than the daredevil acts of a trapeze artist. We walk through our day from its first waking moment, clinging for dear life to the comfortable and routine patterns that give form and shape to our often mundane lives, yet never knowing if and when we might be called to let go, to release our grip and trust in the strong and capable hands that are waiting to catch ours and take us to a new place, a different rhythm, a height previously unknown, a risk whose outcome we can't determine because it's beyond our control. 
someone once told me about a cantankerous priest he knew. When anyone said to the guy, have a nice day, he'd respond by saying, I have other plans. Well, life has other plans for us. This unknowable future, which unfolds unwittingly before our eyes and can take a turn at any time, and we're helpless to stop it. The unscheduled and sometimes traumatic change is a fact of everyone's life, and we don't skate through it. The author and theologian John Shea calls this mid-air living, the moment when the trapeze artist has to let go of one bar and has not yet grabbed the next bar. Although it may just be a moment in time, it feels like an eternity, or it can last for weeks or months. The familiar ground on which we stood shakes, rumbles, sometimes it collapses entirely. If you want the most obvious example in a century, consider the COVID pandemic that has besieged the entire world and upended all our lives in one way or another. Transitions can turn our world upside down and it's difficult to see any value in these in-between states. We hear friends to say to us, oh, hang in there, you'll get through it. And we believe them, looking for ways to adopt and adapt and continue. It may take time, we tell ourselves, but a st stable future awaits us. Life goes on and so will you. However, why spiritual guides tell us something different? They say, don't hurry to a new security. They believe there's potential in that process of floundering, in that midair living. They suggest that this in-between time is an opportunity to remember that we are always more than what is happening to us. We are always more than what is happening to us. We're not only immersed in transition, we transcend it. Our soul isn't only related to the changing world around us, but to the unchanging eternal order. While we live on this earth, we see the horizon of heaven and the presence here and now of a grace that comes from above. This is the wisdom that the prophet Daniel proclaims to us today, where the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. We trust that God has defeated death, but we still need to make that victory, the victory of God's love and his kingdom, real in every moment and mood of our lives and our world. The Gospel of Mark today is filled with science fiction, more fiction than science. It's a first century understanding of the world. There's a vault or dome which formed the heavens. The end times will be accompanied by that vault coming apart. The moon darkening, the scars falling from the dome above, the heavens shaken. But we ought not expect to see the Lord riding on a cloud. We won't spy angels flying from Maine to LA, gathering Christians beneath their wings to the sky. On the other hand, the gospel reality is not fiction. We proclaim it at every Eucharist. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. The fact is this world, this earthly existence we know, this world of war and human wisdom, of sin and self-giving, of laughter mingled with tears, of skyscrapers and computers, of hunger and plenty, this world will come to an end. And with it, we'll close the story of salvation here below. God's magnificent plan from Adam and Eve through Christ to you and me to bring all men and women, all girls and boys, all people to him in endless joy. The promise of everything being fulfilled in Christ is our reason to have hope. When our plans don't go the way we intended, 
when we're discouraged because someone we love was not as loyal and loving as we anticipated, when disappointment or frustration brings us down, Jesus urges us to learn a lesson from the fig tree as it sprouts new leaves with the approaching summer. Today, we learned that lesson of new life, and we saw it reflected in our opening meditation, that new life in Christ, which our departed loved ones now share with the risen Lord. The fallen leaves of our lives are not the final word. They are the prelude for possibilities of new life in the seeds and fruit we may not even realize we have produced. Christ calls us to embrace not the things of the body, but of the soul, not the things of the world, but the things of God, the lasting eternal treasures of love and mercy, the joy that comes from selfless giving, the satisfaction that comes from lifting up the hopes and dreams of one another. In our midair living against that horizon of eternity, we can learn to meet hatred with love, insecurity with firm faith, and darkness with light. We can be signs of hope in a hopeless world, bearers of peace amid acts of violence, and risk takers who are unafraid to let go of the bar and soar to new and inspiring heights. The strong and loving hands of God await us. Let us profess our faith in the God of new life with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He defended in the hell. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As creation moves towards fulfillment, let us pray through the Son of Man who comes with great power and glory. I ask Angie Malanka and Terry Enns to lead us in prayer. Aggie, you're muted. Sorry. That the church may faithfully share the wisdom handed on to it by God and lead all people to hope and trust as the day of the Lord draws near. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many young hearts may open to hear the Lord's call to serve the church in the priesthood, religious life, and lay ministry as we pray during National Vocation Awareness Week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That a song of thanksgiving will arise from our hearts this coming holiday season and echo each day in praise of God who has blessed us so abundantly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the gospel may awaken in each of us a new impetus for building and fostering a sense of community and for reading the signs of the times with wisdom and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick of our community, especially Rita Jones, may deepen their trust in God as they unite their trials to the offering of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
that our beloved dead and those whose names are inscribed in our parish book of remembrance may awaken to everlasting life and shine like the stars for all eternity, especially those who have died from the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us bring our personal needs and intentions to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, you foretell the dawning of God's kingdom. May we discover it as clearly as we are able to discern the change of seasons. Hear our prayers and let us not fear your imminent return, but await it with hope and joy. For you live and reign with one God in unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let that peace be shared among you, those of you at home with your loved ones, those of us uh, alone worshiping with you online, extend that peace in our hearts. Although we are not gathered physically, to share the Eucharist, we know that the Lord desires to be one with us. And so we can pray. Let's... Lord Jesus, you are with us always, especially when we gather in your name, to hear your word in scripture, and to be fed by your sacred body and blood. When we cannot physically come to the Eucharistic table, be with us still. May your real presence fill our hearts and send us with love to care for the earth and all our brothers and sisters. Amen. Having heard your saving word, we humbly pray, Lord God, that what your Son commands us to do in imitation of himself may strengthen among us the bonds of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for joining in prayer this morning, and thanks to our readers and uh, prayer leaders. Uh, thanks to uh, Suzanne Bregman for uh, putting together the uh, opening uh, reflection uh, for the memory of our deceased loved ones. Communion will be distributed in, in front of the church at 12 noon for those who wish to receive. I'm hoping that uh, everybody has participated in the DMI, the Disciple Maker Index, the online survey that everyone in the diocese, all parishioners 16 years and older have been uh, requested to fill out to help in the diocese and its uh, ongoing and future planning. There's still another week or so uh, to fill that out. Uh, the women's ministry is excited to invite the women of the parish to Advent by Candlelight a beautiful evening of prayer, song, and fe fellowship to prepare for the wonder of Advent. It will be held on Wednesday, December 1st at 7 o'clock in the Grand Hall. Um, you can connect and get information on the parish website and in a timely perpetuum. Uh, next week, we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King and the closing of this liturgical year and the Gospel of Mark, which we've been hearing. 
on uh, Wednesday, November 18th, this week at seven o'clock. Uh, we're gonna use our uh, town hall format uh, to have an evening on information about the settlement of Afghan refugees in Contra Costa County. Um, the uh, speakers will include a Marine Corps Lieutenant who served in Afghanistan and who's taken a leading role in helping to settle Afghan refugees in our communities. Uh, the Director of Im Immigration Legal Services and the President of the Islamic Cultural Community Center will be there as well as the voices of recently arrived Afghan refugees. And then following the, their presentation, there'll be an opportunity uh, for questions and reflections on our response uh, to this crisis as Catholic Christians. So I hope you'll consider joining us and inviting a friend uh, to do so as well. Father John, it's on Thursday, the 18th, not Wednesday. The 18th, sorry about that. Um, I want to take well, just a couple more minutes if I could. Uh, the month of November, as I said, is dedicated all month to, to All Souls and All Saints Day. And as our scripture re readings uh, remind us about the end times, and that's a reality that every one of us face in our lives. It's also a reality that our loved ones face. And I want to um, give some information about a, a program uh, called Five Wishes. You can Google it or go to fivewishes.org to find out more detail about it. But it's a document that a person is invited to fill out uh, about your, your wishes when it comes to that time in your own life when you're near to the Lord calling you home. But it's an invitation extended to everyone, no matter your age, since that's a reality uh, that uh, we can't control and that will be part of our, our lives, the end of our life. And so as the scriptures say, you know not the day nor the hour. So it's a means of preparation for you. And it calls forth an honest discussion with your loved ones. 42 states recognize the Five Wishes document as a legal and binding document, and the document is downloadable online. So let me briefly just go through those five wishes. Wish one, the person I want to make health care decisions for me when I can't make them for myself. That's a, a durable power of attorney. But a little bit more than that, it's someone who knows you well, someone you've had open and honest discussion with about how you want uh, to face uh, the end of life. Wish two, my wish for the kind of medical treatment I want or don't want. It might indicate I don't want to be in pain or I want the, to, my doctor to give me enough medicine to relieve my pain, it mean, even if that means I will be drowsy or sleep more than I would otherwise. Um, I don't want anything done or omitted in indicating what that might be by doctors and nurses. If it's a, a do not resuscitate order, they need to have that uh, in writing on your part. And the, the church's teaching has always been that we are not morally obligated to take extraordinary means to preserve life. And that's because we believe there is life beyond death, life beyond this life. Wish three, my wish for how comfortable I want to be. Having been at the uh, deathbed of many, many uh, people over the years, and even in this past year, many of those parishioners that, that uh, you saw in those pictures, to, for your family to know your desires. Do you want a cold compress placed on your forehead? Do you want your lips and mouth to be kept moist? Do you want to be massaged with warm oil or have your favorite music playing or your personal care attended to, to have your hair washed or your teeth brushed? Do you want someone to read scripture to you or poetry as you leave this world? Do you want to be informed about hospice care? Wish for, my wish for how I want people to treat me. Do you want someone with you at the time of death, your hand held? Do you want your family or others to talk to you even if you're unresponsive? Do you want them to be praying for you and with you? Do you want a spirit of kindness and cheerfulness 
and not sadness or moroseness to surround you as you leave this life and journey to the next. Uh, do you want, if at all possible, to die at home? And wish five, my wish for what I want my loved ones to know. There are four important things uh, that the, the dying uh, want to say and need to hear. Uh, thank you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. And I love you. The four critical things. Death is a time of transition and growth. It leads us as in a people of faith into new life in Christ. And so that time of transition is a sacred time. I always tell people who are gathered around a loved one who's dying that we are standing on holy ground. So again, I invite you to consider looking at that document, the five wishes, no matter what your age is, for we know not the day nor the hour, and uh, have honest, open, and frank discussions with your loved ones. It's a gift that you give to them by letting them know uh, what your desires and your wishes are at that time. Let's pray for God's blessing. In great love, the God of all consolation gave us the gift of life. May God fill you with faith in the resurrection of his son and with the hope of rising to new life. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.